Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech. Um, I have a really exciting video because this is kind of a unique product in my opinion. It's been kind of done by other brands, but I don't think executed to this level. And I'm talking about the Antline Kimura line. So what is the Kimura? It's basically a microphone system designed for IEMs. Now Antline has four SKUs and they did send this to me review, uh, for review earlier. Um, so big thanks to them because it allowed me to release the review somewhat on time to when it was actually officially announced. And just on this note, in case you have an eagle eye, I have the Solo and the Duo. I'll talk about the differences with these IEMs. The Duo box has a red IEM on it. That's just because I got a pre-production or like an early sample box. Um, yours will likely have a blue IEM. It was only on the first batch. The Duo is blue and the Solo is red in addition to some other changes. So what's really cool about this is they're not selling just an IEM with a mic. You can use most IEMs. In fact, if your IEM has a detachable cable, there's a very strong likelihood that you can just buy the $60 Kimura mic system, which has everything you see here but the IEM itself, and attach it to your IEMs. So uh, I have the Odyssey Euclids. I'll show you what it looks like attached after. Those are $1,000 planar IEMs. And um, I don't have that cable with me, but Antlion also makes a two-pin variant. So these are MMCX, by the way, which is a round plug. It allows the IEM to rotate. Just a different type of connector. And that comes with the Solo and the Duo. They also make a two-pin 0.78 millimeter variant, which will work on things as cheap as like, you know, the SoundNote Zero, for example. So if you already have a good budget IEM that you really like, comfort, sound quality, etc., you can buy the $60 Kimura and now get a really good mic on the IEM. Now, the voodoo magic thing for me, so just the reason why this is a big deal is because a lot of people lately, they message me and they ask about gaming with IEMs. What are the best gaming IEMs? And that's a harder, I might get into that more this year. I'm definitely going to be covering more IEMs this year. Um, but the hard part with IEMs is it's typically no good mic solution, especially if you're on the console side. So this thing came along and now you, you have this like whole new world opened up. That's why to me, the Kimura is such a big deal. They offer two pretty good, well-priced IEM packages with the $60 mic. So when you do the math, basically the Solo is $100, so it's $40 extra to get these IEMs. And then for $150, you can step up to the Duo, which comes with a higher quality IEM setup. So. This is big. A lot of people want to start gaming on IEMs and you are always hamstrung by your mic option in a sense. So this opens up a whole new world and I will do the mic test. I will show you how it sounds compared to the other Antlion products, including the ModMic Wireless and the ModMic Uni, um, which attach to full size headphones. So we'll do a side by side comparison so you can hear what it sounds like. Now, when you put this on, I just want to show you how simple this is. I like MMCX for this reason. I like that it can rotate once it's connected. Uh, typically I use, I have more IEMs that are two pin, but basically all you have to do is put the IEM, IEM in, put the hook over your ear and kind of rotate it in place. And this little rubber hook has really good memory to it. It's not like super stiff, but it's all rubberized. Uh, it's gonna help alleviate some of the weight or stress from the cable. I would say, and the microphone, but this microphone has like no mess. Um, I constantly had a look to see if the microphone uh, was actually attached properly or if I did something on the install because you can't tell it's there from left to right. There's almost zero difference whatsoever aside from like, you know, touching it and feeling it um, on your shirt. Now, if I had to nitpick something, and this was sent to me for review, as I said, so uh, big thanks to Antlion. If I had to be nitpicky at all, there are a little bit more microphonics with this rubber cable than some other IEMs I've used, even down to like $20. So these do transmit some of the noise into your ear. It comes with a clip. So they recommend to reduce or minimize cable noise to so just use the clip. And by doing so, now all this stuff over here, it's not really doing anything up top because it's not moving all the wire. So this will help cut down you know, some of the microphonic issues, things like that. In the box, you have a few things. So it came with a TRRS uh, splitter which basically, so if you're using this for gaming on a console, you can use the included adapter and it'll combine both the mic and the audio portion into one at the adapter. So let's talk about sound quality. And I don't want the whole review just to be about the sound quality, even though that's typically my favorite part because the Kimura line, the big selling point is you can buy just the cable for 60 bucks and attach it to a lot of different IEMs. 
As far as how the Solo and the Duel stack up with each other, well, the Solo is a dynamic driver, Solo, is a dynamic driver for everything. It's one speaker that's doing all of the frequency response work um, and it's V-shaped. So there's a lot of deep, heavy bass. It's elevated quite a bit. It's recessed in the mids, which means like, you know, male vocals, um, lower tone uh, instruments. They're just gonna take a slight step back in the track and then it picks back up in the one to 2000 Hertz range where all of a sudden it really comes forward in the track. It's a good tune for gaming. A lot of people like that sound. For the music side, it's still adequate. I think a lot of people will like the V shape. Um, it's a very common preference a lot of people do. You get a product, a lot of people boost bass and they boost treble. So this is kind of doing some of that out of the box, meaning you don't have to really EQ anything if you like that sound. Uh, on gaming especially too, it's really fun with immersion because explosions are you know, a little bit deeper and harder hitting and then the environmental sounds, the higher pitch stuff is very forward and present. And the duo, uh, the solo actually does a really good job when you consider that the IEMs are basically $40. They're really nice. Um, when you step into the duo, the duo doesn't have the same peaky treble response that I got on the solo. So to me, it's a little bit less sibilant. They're both forward and V-shaped in their own way. They're similar to each other, but I found that the, the duo had a little bit better representation for music. The biggest standout to me was the separation. And I know some audiophile people aren't going to agree with this statement um, because they think all headphones or headsets will be the same for footsteps. Um, I do notice a difference with footstep awareness on the Duo. So if you're concerned with buying a set like this and you just want, you, you're looking at Antlion for one or the other, the Duo has a better job of isolating details and in instruments, for example. So it's easier to pick up all the stuff going on in the track. And on the gaming side, that does translate into improved awareness. It's just the soundstage, these are not huge open soundstage products. They're IEMs. Big headphones, open back headphones and speakers are for soundstage. But from imaging, these just happen to add like just a little bit extra space, um, but do an exceptional job of isolating where things are coming from. It was just easier for me to track people. And I played, you know, hours of shipment because I'm a glutton for punishment apparently, but realistically I was just trying to level up guns. So that is a chaotic thing. And it, even in shipment, I was still able to find where people were coming from. So they did great there. And then on games like Warzone, um, the more subtle stuff, they both did fine. I'm not gonna say that you need this game changing certain sound to do well in a game. Practice makes the biggest difference, uh, but these didn't hold me back. I felt I was still just as competitive as I was with some of my larger, more expensive products, which is great because this is doing that in a compact IEM. I had a lot of fun playing with it. And again, for all the casual stuff, racing games, these are both fine. They're more than fine. They were comfortable to wear long-term, but ultimately the sound quality was actually a lot better than I expected. All right, now I'm talking to you on the Antlion Kimura microphone. No edits. I'm not doing anything to the sound in post-production. I literally have the MacBook uh, gain set to 50%. I'm recording it in Adobe Audition. If I make any changes in post-production to the gain, just so it better aligns with the gain of my main shotgun mic, I will post a comment on how much gain I had to adjust to match it, which was also boosted in post-production. I usually add like 5 dB in post-production, so because I have the gain set lower. Anyway, this is what the Kimura mic sounds like. Surprisingly, for a tiny little mic, it has really good warmth to it. The voicing of the microphone is nice, almost like that podcaster warmth. The one thing that stands out is this does pick up a lot more background noise than I'm used to for the other mod mics, which you'll hear in a moment. So this is a little bit more open sounding. It is going to hear your breathing, so you can hear me breathing in and out once in a while. It's going to pick up some more background noise, so let's start doing a typing test. I'll switch on a mechanical keyboard from SteelSeries, and then the MacBook Pro keyboard, and then a little scrape test so you can hear some noise in the background. Scrape test. So that is the Kimura mic. All right, now I'm talking on the Antlion Mod Mic Uni. This is the wired version, 3.5 millimeter, and it can attach to full-size headphones like this, little magnetic attachment here. I'm using the same wire adapter that I was using on the Kimura uh, in the prior mic test, but this is what it sounds like. I have it attached to a Bear Dynamic Tiger 300R. Great headphone for gaming and music listening as well, considering the price point. 
but it didn't have a microphone, so obviously this is kind of like a match made in heaven. Anyway, let's do the background noise test. MacBook. And the scrape test. That's it. All right, now I'm talking on the Antlion Mon Mic Wireless. You can see why this is a popular mic. For a wireless mic, it sounds great and it makes it easier because I don't have to deal with a secondary cord if I don't want to. Obviously, you have to deal with a wireless adapter and charging it, but that's why you can pick either one. So my MacBook gain is set to 50%. Um, let's start typing on the keyboard. You can hear the background noise. Let's type on my MacBook. And the scrape test. That's the mom mic wireless. So just in case, because I know some people are concerned about the nozzle size, uh, if you have something that's been measured or you're just curious how this stacks up, the opening of this nozzle, let's get make sure I get an accurate measurement here. It says 3.78 millimeters. That's the outside edge of this nozzle system before you get to the ring. Uh, some people are sensitive to a larger uh, bore size, if you will, in your ear, if you have tiny ears. So I just want to point that out. I have um, other IEMs that have a larger bore than this, like from KZ. And then there's IEMs like the Odyssey um, Euclids, which have a smaller bore, different shape, but um, it can vary. And just because I mentioned it earlier, just to show you real quick, these the uh, Odyssey Euclid IEMs, they're planar magnetic closed back IEMs, um, and it's a piece of cake. I just have to unsnap the uh, Duo in this case. I'll put the Euclid in my ear again, hook it over my ear, and then I have to, you know, obviously readjust the rubber so it fits around or like the hook around my ear. And now I have a great seal and I'm good to go and I can use the Odyssey Euclid's for gaming or chat and benefit from the Kimura cable. So that about wraps up the review. You can see why I'm super excited for this. It's universal for the most part. They didn't lock you into some custom proprietary ecosystem. You're just using standard connectors for so many, like literally hundreds or thousands of IEMs, but now you get an awesome mic. This is a huge deal because some people already have good gaming headphones or music headphones, etc., and they want something small to travel with but still want a mic. Um, you can game on this comfortably because now you don't have like the ear heat if you're concerned about heat. Um, my biggest reason why I like this is for travel. It, usually now when I travel, I've been bringing wireless earbuds instead of my larger headphones because it's just easier to fit in a backpack if I try to travel light but I always had to decide if I was gonna have a microphone or not. You know, sometimes I'll bring my gaming laptop to play with some buddies uh, when I go visit out of state. Now I have a gaming headset, if you will, that fits in a tiny pouch that still has good sound quality. And honestly, the mic is better than most gaming headsets because Antlion, this is like their thing. You know, they know how to make high-performing compact mics that are universal, which is great. So you can see why I'm excited for this. I think a lot of people are going to consider getting this, not to necessarily just replace what they have, but to go with what they have and have something different than just more headsets and headphones. This is a really cool product. Uh, I'm super excited. I think uh, they've been working on this for a long time now, apparently. So I'm glad to see the results uh, work as well as they did. So hopefully you found the review helpful. I will have links in the description below to help you find it. They're not any special affiliate or marketing links with them. Um, there's no extra commission involved. They're just generic links to help you find the product. So with that being said, thank you so much for the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I did start a Discord server as of last week. It's a quiet launch. I'm going to slowly start mentioning it more. Um, so take a look in the description for that and I'll see you online.